Hey, what is going on everyone? It's Abyss and today we are back with another Dead Men Mode Challenge and for anyone here who watched my previous Dead Men Mode Challenge that I did with 61 mil, I just wanted to say that that is a discontinued series now. I left the video up just because I thought some people might still find it entertaining, but me and him never did actually complete that series. For some reason he didn't want to continue with me and I don't really know why, but at the end of the day he's my boy and you know if he doesn't want to commit to it then that's fine, we can just find somebody else to challenge and it happened to be Ditter Bitter. Ditter Bitter's played a lot of Dead Men Modes, I've been PKing with him on there in fact, that's actually where I met him all those years ago. But we decided to do a demo mode challenge where you start off on World 45 from complete scratch and you have 12 hours to build and create a good account. That means everything that comes in between, whether it's questing, money making, training, everything that you do has to be done from scratch. We can't take any donations, do any sort of exaggerated grand exchange purchases. For example, I can't sell a wooden shield in the GE for 5 mil and have one of my friends buy it, that they would just be cheating or taking a donation, and things like that. We can't loot other people's kills. We have to just pretty much do everything on our own. We're still allowed to use the GE, of course, because how else are you going to get things like potions and stuff within 12 hours? You can't do everything on a new, fresh account. But anyways, guys, we're going to be grinding it out for 12 hours, and then at the end, we're going to fight to see who was able to build a better account, who was able to make more money, who had the better strategy and this should be a lot of fun so let's get right into it Alright guys, so I'm off to a pretty bad start, I'm not gonna lie. We spent about 45 minutes doing absolutely nothing, and I pretty much told Ditter that I don't think that I'm gonna be able to actually pose a challenge at the end of the video, just because I'm already one hour behind, and that's like almost 10% of the time that we were allowed to do this. So he was nice enough to let me restart, just because if we're doing a challenge, it should be something that's actually competitive. I was already willing to forfeit the $100 wage. I was like, look man, I'll just give you the $100, I'll accept the loss, I don't wanna waste another 12 hours of my time. But instead, he was able to just give me the 12 hours fully on a brand new account, so I have a lot of respect for him for that. But, I mean, if the situation was reversed, I would do it for him as well. It's not good content for anybody if one person's severely behind. It's just, you know, like, you know, you'll fight, you'll bully the other person, and that's that. Anyways, I got to restart on this account here called Narcos, which is one of my mid-levels. And this time, I will make sure not to die. Alright, that's the last time, man. I swear, that's the last time. I promise, I promise. Alright, now that we got the 10k, I decided to go and buy some range gear. I wanted to go to Lava Drags, which was my original plan, as you probably saw in the previous clips of me dying. But I realized I kind of had to get some HP levels up because the dragon will literally just one hit you if you don't have a high enough HP level. And there's probably a chance I make a mistake somewhere within the couple of hours I'm actually going to be up there. Alright, so we knocked out 24 HP, and of course we got a couple of range and defense levels, and a whole bunch of herbs. Sold this all to the GE for about 20k, and it's off to buy some runes now. And there we go, we got 13 mage, so we can actually mage lava dragons out and actually make some profit. Alright, off to lavas. Thank god I made it past the hellhound this time. First lava dragon kill, didn't get anything crazy. 20 blood runes, that's not that bad though. Bloods are actually like 3 to 400 each, so that's like, what, 8k? First inventory down, it might look like a lot of loot, but unfortunately I didn't actually get any good uniques here. The rune bolts don't sell, the rune darts hardly sell, the blood runes are okay, the cash is okay. But all in all, the big item in here that I got is on the rare drop table, and we got the worst item possible, 100 silver ore. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I don't even think it sells in the GE. I don't remember if I ended up selling it in the GE. But 100 silver ore, nearly a 1 in 3,000 chance. Man, why couldn't I have just got like a D-Med or something? Man, why you gotta give me the silver ore? Back to lavas. Hopefully we get something better than just a bunch of bone drops. That's literally all I got last time was bone drops and items that didn't sell. And yeah, as you can see from this inventory, we pretty much got the same thing as last time. The only really good item I got was the blood runes and maybe even the laws. The javelins don't sell, the rune bolts don't sell, and I got a whole bunch of just base drops. Like, no actual drops, just like the base lava dragon drops. Ah, <sighs> fuck my life. Since I wasn't really profiting too much at lava dragons, they take a long time to kill. As you can see, I'm already about three hours into this session, and so far I haven't made much money. So I devised a new plan, which was sort of my plan all along. 
they get enough money to be able to come to the Zami Wine Altar. They spawn every three seconds, and based on my calculations, these actually ended up selling for about one to two K each. Now, the only thing is you do spend money on law runes, and it takes a long time without the Wilderness Hard Diary to be going up and down through the crevice, but I wanted to see if I could make some profit here because Lava Dragons were just not working out for me. So based on the last clip, as you can see, I started doing the Zami Wine Altar at nine hours, 25 minutes. We're now at nine hours and 17 minutes. So doing an entire run starting at the Wine Altar itself, not actually thinking about the transit there. It takes about 10 minutes per inventory and with the looting bag as well, that's over 50 wines. So you could probably make a good amount of money here if the wines sell for a decent price. All right, so we're finally at the GE. I put the wines in for 500 each just to try and get some quick cash so I could go back and do another money making method hopefully these sell while i waited for the wines to sell i decided to just go up to lava drags these are guaranteed cash and i don't want to waste a whole bunch of time at the wine altar if they don't actually bring in any profits and finally the wines actually sold all 51 i'm not a skiller so i don't really know what they're used for i think that they're ranging pots but we also managed to get a rune kite from the lava dragon at the exact same time and finally my luck after three hours has turned around a little bit in my favor on this challenge so we've got about eight hours left on the challenge and finally I got some pretty good loot from a lava dragon trip. We got the orbs which sold pretty well. We got the onyx bolt tips which are very good, one of the best drops you can get at lava dragons, some blood runes, a decent amount of cash, and of course the rune kite. Plus, I was already 52 prayers, so I started just stockpiling the Lava Dragon Bones and selling those to the GE for a couple of thousand as well, just because I don't need any more than 52 prayers, because I'm not obviously going to get Augury or Rigor or anything like that in 12 hours. So since Lava Dragons are kind of RNG if you make the most of your time, and the wines actually ended up selling, I decided to give it another go and maybe make a little bit more money. The chances are that the wines are actually worth more than the 500 GP that I put them in for, so I decided to try and gamble it and just see what we could do with the 100 laws. So when I went back to Mage Bank, I actually ended up seeing that the shop stocks 250 laws, so I just quickly bought all of those and rounded up around 300 Zami wines. Now if these actually end up selling, that's going to be amazing, because right now, even at like 1k each that's 300k and since i got the laws really cheap that there will be some immense profits for training this account so i decided to just stick the zami wines in the ge for 1600 each and hope that they sold over time i left those in there while i actually ended because we did this in two six hour segments just so we didn't get completely burnt out and of course i put in a whole bunch of offers for other dragon hides because it's time to start training this account with only six hours remaining all right so now we're waiting for everything to sell we decided to go down underneath edge dungeon to kill chaos druids if we can manage to get anything that actually will supplement good potions like ranors for example we can make some really good money and get some beginner training out of the way so that we can start using better dragon hides I got 40 range out of the way, but none of the better dragon hides like blue or red were selling, so I decided to just go and use the remaining time getting more Zami wine so that I could stuff them in the GE and wait for them to sell overnight, since we were doing this in two parts. And this is what my ending GE looked like after day one. We have still about 100 Zami ones to sell. We have a couple offers in for some super restores, maybe getting them a little bit cheaper so that I can use those later on. And of course, a whole bunch of red and blue dragon hide because the next day is going to be mostly training. So here we are, guys. We are now more than halfway through the challenge with just five hours and 45 minutes remaining. You can see my stats here. I'm 51 defense, 44 range, 69 mage, and only 55 HP. A lot of my magic experience has came from using telekinetic grab to get Zami ones, which gives no hit points XP, so I have a lot of catching up to do combat-wise. And I decided to do some Wilderness Slayer. With a bit of luck, I could actually end up getting a couple Archaic Emblems. And of course, that's what we did right here. As you can see, we got a whole bunch of Archaic Emblems, and there was a very slim chance of actually getting a Laren's Key as well. I believe the drop rate from Ice Warriors is really not that great, but of course, my luck has once again improved, and although I'm very behind Ditter Bitter's status at this point, I did manage to grab a Laren's Key, and hopefully this here will get us a little bit of money on top of what we already have. <laughs> Bro, a Laren's Key from these things is like 1 in 350. Tedge, I'm so happy I stayed, man. Alright, I guess I got my Warrior mixed up. It's actually 1 in 258. Earth Warrior is 1 in 352. But all in all, that's still a very, very, very rare drop, especially for only killing a couple of Ice Warriors on a Slayer task. So happy I got this Laren Key. I just hope that we actually end up getting a good reward for it, man. I right, guess we're approaching the pirate ship to unlock the Laren's big chest with the Laren's Key. The best thing you can get from here are Dagon High pieces, which are about a 1 in 250 chance, which is basically what I just hit just previously getting the key. But unfortunately, all I got was these uncut diamonds. Bruh. 
which isn't that bad. I don't really remember how much I sold them for as of right now, but all in all, I mean, people need them for diamond bolts or any sort of crafting or money making. I mean, like, they're diamonds. Who doesn't want diamonds? So I'm finally back at Edgeville. I cashed in the three archaic emblems for a total of 50,000 each, coming up to 150,000 points. And now this bounty hunter reward shop is very weird. It's the old shop without any rune or mystic items or anything like that. There's no potions in here. There's nothing that I can really see as a great value for my points. There isn't even rune arrows in here anymore. It's just a bunch of upgrades. So I decided to just like wing it and buy some uh teleports magic Trobo and butte scrolls stuff like that and i'm just hoping that this stuff sells over time in the ge i had previously just bought a magic Trobo and butte scroll so i know that there's some demand for it and that other people are buying this so hopefully it sells all right so at this point here i was a little bit sketched out me and ditter were obviously both live streaming this it was a really good way for us to get some content for deadman mode out on the twitch community and a lot of people were really enjoying it and they like to see the competitive nature of this and if I do this again, I'll let you guys know because I'm sure a lot of you guys will want to see this live. But I did think that somebody in my chat told Ditter my plan to come over to the Elder Chaos Druids because a minute after I said I was coming here, he immediately geared up and came over here because it's a very good way to get range XP. You can use Eagle Eye the entire time so you're actually getting more XP. Plus, you don't have to worry about prayer pots. Now, I did kind of grief him a little bit here, I'm going to be honest, because I thought somebody snitched on my, my spot and my idea. Uh, I started attacking his druids, as you can see. I'm higher range, and I definitely have better gear than him at this point since my red dehyde finally sold, and I knew that I could out-DPS him, stealing any potential drops. But it was just a joke, and just for banter, I wasn't actually going to grief him the entire time. I just wanted to make him think that I was, just to kind of, you know. No, it's ditter, man. It's ditter. You got to play with him a little bit just under four hours remaining we hit 65 range and we finally have a decent bit of money and gear but i don't know if my final plan for this challenge is still going to come through and there we go 68 range two levels away from using black dragon hide holy there we go man a tier 5 archaic emblem off of an elder chaos druid the chance of this is very very rare especially since i'm not able to kill that many of these per hour but we did manage to get that and that is an absolute massacre of bounty hunter points the stuff that I was already selling actually ended up selling as well, so the teleports were not that bad. And of course, the Magic Shortbow and Butte Scroll was very good. There must be a lot of people that were playing at the time on early accounts, so I was able to actually sell that. And now we have another influx of money coming in. With this, I didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket, so I bought one Magic Shortbow and Butte Scroll, one Ring of Wealth Scroll, 50 Padawa Teleports, 5 Carol Teleports, and 5 Anacol Teleports. My plan behind this was hoping that people would buy these when they're on different spell books and be able to use these teleports to get around quickly i tried to pick the ones that people would most likely use so for example somebody trying to get to canifis who's on regular spell book somebody trying to get to edgeville who doesn't have a glory or isn't on a regular spell book and somebody who may be trying to do like a wilderness clue scroll or a wilderness slayer task who wants to get to anna crawl quickly and then of course i just kind of gambled with the two scrolls i didn't really know which one would be better than the other so i just bought one of each for some reason i thought you needed to have 75 range for black chins so i came back up to the elder chaos druids and i ended up getting 71 range but somebody ended up telling me it was only 65 so i thought to myself instead of training to 75 i should try and make as much money as i can and i know for a fact that zami wines are guaranteed cash if they sell but with only three hours remaining i was a little bit skeptical if they would sell in time but i decided to risk it and head over there with the chance of getting better xp per hour if i was using black chins since I was already in the Mage Bank area, I decided to quickly do the Mage Arena since you can actually alk the staff for 48k once you complete it, and it's basically just free money at this point. I managed to pick up about 260 wines, so I have about 200k cash, 260 wines, and 384 laws left. So I decided to put those in the GE and start buying some Black Chin Champas. Here we go, 200 Black Chins acquired, that there is a massive bulk of my cash, and I really hope that these pay off because I don't have a lot of time left to make money or train. So here we are at Black Chins. I decided to chin on defense so that I could get 60. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I did manage to actually pick up a D-Med in the GE after waiting about 10 hours. And we finally got a decent range level now. We're at 78 range by the time we finish chinning. And I'm almost completely out of money, but I have one hour left to finish the build and make any money that I might need for the final fight. Seeing as I only had 40 minutes remaining, I decided to do what I could and I went back to Elder Chaos Druids just to try and get a couple extra levels if possible. And that's when the series finally took a very positive turn. We managed to get an Elder Chaos Druid robe skirt, which is a 1 in 1400 chance 
off of an Elder Chaos Druid. So I quickly raced to the GE to do whatever I could do to make that extra money. I put it in and very luckily it sold. I don't even know how. It's probably just because it's a cosmetic item and it's very rare since most Dead Men players aren't actually doing this. And I managed to get a couple more chins to which I decided to race over to Apatol and grind out that final XP in this very crunch moment. I wasn't actually able to buy that many chins, I only grabbed about a hundred because they're so expensive and I spent that for the last level that I will be getting in this challenge which is 80 range with only 20 minutes remaining I don't see how I could have gotten any higher. For the last 20 minutes of the challenge I basically just put all my time and energy into regular druids just to try and get herbs so that I could have enough money to finish this with the right type of supplies and we ended up getting a couple ranors which was really nice but now it's time to buy whatever I can and sort out all my profits, all my margins, all my possibilities and get ready to fight Ditter Bitter for the final round of the 12 hour Deadman Mode Challenge. Alright guys, so I don't want to spoil his build or anything, but my plan was basically to go range mage or actually range melee, but unfortunately for me, I didn't get the best early game start, and all of my luck came through towards the last like hour to hour and a half. So because of this, I had to really supplement with what I had, and I knew for a fact I wasn't going to be able to afford Mystic or afford any sort of real way to use magic efficiently based on the drops I was getting in the first six hours. If anything, I think that I was super behind and I just had no real chance to do anything other than Bolt Rag. So I had to make do with what my profits and what my account build was, and I pretty much went Bolt Rag the entire way, simply because the first couple hours I was building my account towards going magic as well through Lava Drags, but my drops just weren't good and I really had no potential to actually see that build to the end so I switched up my strategy based on what I was given and I decided to go with straight bolt rag so Ditter Bitter here actually ended up with the build that I wanted whereas I was kind of in the back seat and I only really got a good build based on my final drops when I got the Elder Druid skirt and of course the Archaic Emblem. After that, I really had no choice and I had to just go with, through with whatever I had, which was basically being a Bolt Ragger because I didn't have time to charge the staff or train magic to 80 anymore. So without further ado guys, this is how the fight ended. Abyss vs Ditter Bitter 12 hour dead memo challenge, the legacy of the Bolt Ragger.
there you have it folks that eight that i hit procced the ring of recoil which ended up procking my heart prayer which ended up giving me the final hp necessary to finish him off for good and we ended up winning with just seven hit points remaining the biggest mistake here i think i made is i accidentally brought a magic pot with me as you can see my inventory completely unnecessary i meant to pre-pot for the extra magic levels in the bank and i accidentally brought it with me which would have given me another 20 hp but of course we still did secure the win we got the 100 dollars from ditter in form of subscription gifts on twitch and uh, i'm not gonna lie man everything got pretty crazy twitch chat went absolutely insane and i'll show you guys some of the reactions here see that one take heart break three heal headshot boom 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 take off your snake skin bandana for me one time take off your snake skin bandana for me one time if you out here shooting everyone bolts on it daily you out here shooting everyone bolts on it daily take off your snake skin bandana for me one time Strapped up every day with the crystal bow, whole lot of stick talk. And that is it guys, we ended up winning and I won't lie, I went full spaz there at the end, I was excited, I was happy, what do you do when you're excited, you're happy and you just won something, you know, you scream, you shout, you make a fool of yourself, but all in all guys, Ditter is a good friend of mine, I appreciate him stepping up to the challenge, I've been trying to do this challenge with people for a long time and nobody wants to do it, hopefully now we can do maybe some 2v2s with other people or maybe even more people will be open to doing this, but then again, Demo Mode is coming back in a couple weeks and we thought this would be the perfect time to upload this series. Now guys, I just want to say I hope nobody hates on Ditter or anything he is actually like I said a really good friend of mine he was even supposed to come and stay with me for a couple weeks here in November but unfortunately with all the lockdown and stuff going on we won't be able to make that happen anymore but yeah guys we did end up winning and I wanted to give a shout out to Lynx Ocarina and RAR as well for showing us this idea and making this kind of a really public and also very uh, popular series idea um, all in all guys, the series went really well in my favor. I mean, we ended up winning. I did want to do a range build similar to his range mage actually. And unfortunately, I just, like I said, didn't get the proper drops, but I had to show up and perform my best that I could. But in the end, I mean, we ended up winning. That just goes to show how Bolt Rag is actually very, very, very broken on Den Remote. And hopefully this will even maybe encourage Jagex to making steps to make it not as powerful. There's no reason that somebody who has two styles loses to somebody who only has one. The only reason for that is simply because the RNG and, of course, just the combat styles at early levels are very, very broken in the favor of range. But that's another topic for another time. I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know I uploaded a video yesterday as well, but I want to wait a little bit longer before I do a giveaway on that video simply because I didn't allow it to get as much traffic as I wanted to. And I really think it would be more fair if more people were involved in this. This was a video that was supposed to be released a couple days ago that we didn't get around to releasing. So I'm going to wait before doing the giveaway. But guys, if you want to be entered for an Armadale Crossbow giveaway, all you got to do is leave a comment on this video down below. Hit that like and sub button. Just make sure to leave your username in the comments and we will be giving out some prizes to the viewers. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today, man. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Take care of your family and loved ones. And I'll see you in the next video.